be making bases. What's going on YouTube beat making basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up because we're coming back to back with bangers. Okay. Just like this one, check this out. Today's video, we're going to be going over four steps to a great beat mix. All right. So four things you could do to get dope mixes on your beats. Now, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and say what those first steps are. Uh, the, the four steps are and then from there we're going to be actually showing you how to apply them so the first step is leveling so getting the proper levels on all of the different tracks in your beat so making sure the kick is not too loud or not too low in the mix snare um you know melodies different things like that that's the first step second step i'm going to say is to make sure that the beat is properly eq'd what we're going to be doing is uh, uh, using something called subtractive EQing to make sure that everything is being able to be heard clearly in the mix. So that's the second step. Third step, I would say, is going to be panning. OK, and then the third step and panning for those who are new is just basically moving the instruments around either left or right in the mix to uh, create more of a stereo vibe. OK, and then the last thing is what we'll do to this stereo out. And basically to make sure it's not going to clip and make sure the beat is still loud. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, this beat is something that we've already been working with. And as you can see, I already have a lot of the levels. But what I'm going to do is just talk about kind of like my mindset with a lot of this. When it comes to mixing, I would always recommend, you know, you start off like at your hook, the hook of the beat that's going to have the most most stuff in um, most stuff during the beat. So you can easily be able to mix it. But I always start off with like your 808 and your kick first. And what you want is you want that 808 to be loud, but you still want to feel that punch of the kick. So like you can start off with the 808. So it's loud, it's pretty loud. And with that kick, you see how you can pretty much still hear that kick in the 808. That's what you really want. So like the kick is just a little bit louder than the 808. If you look at the meters and at the actual um, faders. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and bring in some of these other percussion instruments like the clap and snare. And what I'm doing with those is you just kind of want those the clap and snare to be tucked right in under the 808 and kick. From there, you can start working on like the other percussion instruments like your hi-hat, crash, cymbals, uh, open hi-hats, different things like that. And then that should obviously be tucked in right under the snare and the clap. From here, you want to go ahead and bring in your melody and technically your melody should be just tucked right under your drums. All right, so that's the first step here. Got our level sounding right. Next thing we're gonna do is um, use something called um, subtractive EQing, okay? And what that's gonna do is uh, we're basically take away frequencies from one track to make sure that the frequencies on another track can shine through the mix. So for instance, say with this 808, if you look at the frequency chart, most of the 808 frequencies are gonna be coming in on the lower side of the frequency chart. So like if you just, I'm just gonna push play real quick. And I see how most of those um, frequencies are here on the lower part. So basically everything from 200 hertz and below, that's going to be pretty much where the 808 is going to pop through. So what you want to do is make room for that 808. And you don't want, like, say, any of your tracks over here, your melody instruments to be competing with that. And so what you could do to offset that is on the melody track, you can take away 
right? Take away some of the actual low end to make room for that 808. Remember I said, you know, the 808, most of the frequencies was then, you know, under 200 hertz. So if I come right around here at 200 hertz, should be fine. And actually you can base, almost really instantly hear, you know, a difference here in the beat. So you can come over here and actually do that on a lot of these instrument sounds, um, like the clap, snare, hat, open hi-hat, um, rattles, rises, crashes, things like that. Um, you don't want to do subtractive EQing really on the kick. I would leave that alone. So I can just come over here, start on that clap. And always judge things based off your ear, not off of like the actual meter. Um, sometimes a clap, a clap or a snare might sound too thin depending on how much you take out. So you wanna pay attention to that. Same thing with melodies. bet so we got a good eq going on the beats the next thing is the panning as you can see we already have a little bit going with the panning some stuff to the left and to the right but we can even you know dramatize that a little bit more by pushing it over left and right even more so let's just listen to it Another thing that you want to do is keep in mind that by pushing some of these um, tracks over to the left or right, you're actually making more room for the vocal. So like say if that hi-hat was dead center, everything was dead center, where's that vocal going to be? You know what I'm saying? So now that vocal is not going to be competing that much with uh, when it gets laid on top. And then the last thing after the panning is going to be the stereo out. In Logic Pro 10, I found that actually using the Smack Attack plugin on the stereo out works a whole lot of wonders. Um, the main reason is for this clipping option. So when you first put Smack Attack on here, I would just go ahead and click on Clip. And what that's going to do, I found that what for whatever reason, this plugin solves a lot of issues. First issue is going to solve um, is it's going to stop everything from clipping on the stereo out. So like without the plug-in, if I play, push play, you know, about 5.6 dB over what it should be, and it's like peaking. But with the clip, with the plug-in on and just clipping turned on, it pretty much is going to um, get rid of that issue. Plus, the beat is still going to knock the way it needs to knock. OK, so I don't want to overcomplicate things. Mixing used to be something that I was like struggling with super bad. And like these tips right here and these steps, if you um, keep the points and pointers and key tips that I'm teaching you in mind, it's going to help you along your journey to um, get better mixes. If you want more information about mixing, I do have a course on my site, Beat Making Basics dot com it's a mixing course you can't mix it um, it's going to go further in the whole analysis of mixing like literally we're going to go into even more in-depth uh, mixing things in that course but these are the basics man um, thank you for watching make sure if you have questions hit them up in the comments and i will see you in the next lecture or not lecture but i'll see you in the next video